Okay, now we're gonna start cooking. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be you, me, some greens. Don't be afraid of greens. I, were, I was at the store and I remember people always coming to the counter with me or maybe even the cashier saying to me, what are these? What is that? And I'd say collard greens. And very few of them knew what collard greens were. They thought it was kale, maybe some type of lettuce. So the collard greens have been around, but a lot of people are afraid of them. And you shouldn't be, they're very healthy. You know, they have a lot of calcium. Uh, there's a lot of nutritional benefits. And they're very, very tasty. So you have to um, explore those. I'm gonna make some for you today. Here we go. standing in the right spot doing all these things this is the second run for this the first one that I did I didn't have any sound so it sounded something like this but I think I have the sound on properly so here we go my name is Renee Stanley I'm from New York well I filled out the home cooks casting okay let's start again my name is Renee Stanley, and I'm from New York, and I'm here today because of the Food Network Homes Cooks. Uh, the program, the contest. Anyway, here's the application. It was like seven pages, so. Um, you know, it, I told you my age, it asked for all of that stuff. Then I'm noticing here, um, it asks for um, information about culinary school. I've never been to culinary school. Um, your highest level of education. I have an MBA, believe it or not. How did I become interested in cooking? My mother was a fabulous cook. My mother had seven children, has seven children. And when I was growing up, everything was about, do you feel bad today, honey? Let me give you something to eat. How do you feel now? You sad? Let me give you something to eat. Oh, you don't feel good? Let me make you something to eat. And that was the way that went. So food was a very significant and um, integral part of our growing up. That's just the way it was. I guess in a lot of cultures it was the same because mothers tend to nurture you with food. I mean, that's, that's the way it was. So she's, she's my reason why I'm cooking. She's my biggest influence with regard to cooking. My mother, absolutely. I watched her make a little bit of something because we didn't have a lot of money with a lot of children like that. Her and my father, my father worked two jobs. My mother worked two jobs and get, I guess, a little sleep in between, you know. But what they did is show us how to take a little bit and make a lot out of it, increase the value or the quantity, whatever you might want to, however you want to put it. But they were very good at doing that for us. And so they, my father influenced me somewhat. My father gave me his, his, um, his pie recipe that I'm gonna give to you lot guys later on. But my mother was the most influential because she cooked the most and she, my mother went to um, Tuskegee Institute, one of these colleges where she uh, majored in like home economics back then. This was like in the, uh, I wanna say in the 50s. When she graduated, Thurgood Marshall was the commencement speaker. Yeah, Thurgood Marshall. I, I know. Uh, first black justice, you know. Okay, so that's the same one. And um, yeah, they, that was a very prestigious school back then, still is. Uh, the current food trends that annoy me. I hate the fact that everything comes with loads of French fries and loads of bread, because as you know, those are the two things that, well, puts the most weight on you. If you have diabetes, it doesn't help that. So those are the things, no, 
I'm not looking for um, those type of trends I'm hoping will die out pretty soon. What's your best talent in the kitchen? Sex. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Um, people love my bread. You know, I, I make uh, rolls. I make um, bread. So I think my bread and my pies. People usually love my pies. Uh, my favorite utensil is absolutely uh, the KitchenAid mixer. Absolutely the best utensil. I get the most use out of it. I've had it 20 years. My mother has one that's almost 50 years old. Can you believe it? Maybe more than that, maybe 60 years old because her mother gave it to her and her mother passed away. But anyway, um, the KitchenAid mixer is absolutely the, the best. The biggest fan of my cooking is everyone who, who eats anything that I make. And, and that's been strangers, uh, my sister, my brothers, my kids, you know, they, they all, uh, my mother, my father. And it's not fair when you ask uh, who are your favorite Food Network chefs, rank and order, number one being your favorite. I don't know, because there are so many great chefs on that network, to be honest with you. And I can just turn that network on and basically have it on 24 hours. You know, I don't have to worry about get up in the middle of the night and something scary is on or it, it's, it's like comfort food to me, the network. I can put it on any time and I can feel comforted. I like that. It's like my little friend. Yeah. And especially when I'm, it's Thanksgiving Eve or Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve and I have to do a lot of cooking and it's my company. You know, someone's always on and it doesn't matter if I know how to make the dish or not. It, they're giving me great advice all over again. They make me remember some of the things maybe I've forgotten. I love Food Network. It's a big influence because food is how we nurture ourselves. No matter what's going to happen, we know we have to eat. Okay? So look, you might as well eat with the best. Come on. Um, eat with us. So um, that's how Food Network has influenced my life. It's, it's kept me company um, through every holiday, you know, through some of the worst things um, I can think of when I'm uh, feeling a little down. I can turn on Food Network and, and someone's happy, you know, someone's, someone's uplifting in a way that, that's very positive. I like it. I like that. Uh, scrambled eggs. Very easy to make scrambled eggs. You take a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, heat it up, scramble up three eggs, make sure they're frothy. When the oil gets hot, you're going to put the eggs into the frying pan. And as they start to get solidified, as they start to solidify, then you're going to just turn them. You don't want them to brown. Good scrambled eggs are not brown. They're yellow, the color of the eggs. So we want to make sure that they're, um, they don't. They just want to turn them and turn them. And then when they're solidified, we can take them out. That's fine. That's good. All right. So um, that's scrambled eggs. And then you can add butter and cream cheese, you know, if you want. Yeah, cream cheese is good on eggs. Very good. Try it. Don't. Until you try it, don't, don't knock it. All right. Now, if you had to brag about your most impressive culinary achievements, I have to say my Priscilla greens, which is actually my mother's recipe, is probably, uh, people love her greens, my greens, the sweetheart rolls, my bread, my sweet Idaho pie, which is my dessert made with, um, with white potatoes. My pineapple salad, people like that. Have I won any awards? No, but I haven't ever, I've never competed. I never went any, into any contests, you know. I don't, I don't know if that makes you a good cook because you win a lot of awards. I guess it does mean that you're a good baker or whatever, but, and I, yeah, it means something, it does, it means something. But there's so many great cooks that are unsung that are just out there waiting to be discovered or they don't care if they're being discovered or not. They're just cooking for someone that they love and that's enough. That's enough reward for them. They're fine with that. So, um, no, I haven't won any awards and I haven't been in any contests. And this is my first time actually applying for, for this type of thing. So I'm a little nervous. I'm sure you understand. Um, what is my biggest strength is my patience, I think. And, um, the hardest thing I had to overcome in my life. And I thought about a lot of things because you have so many things that you, at my age, especially when you get to my age, um, I've been through so much in my life. You know, everybody's been through the 
Uh, well, not everybody. A lot of people have been through child molestation or domestic violence, or I am a cancer survivor, like a lot of people, and things of that nature. Um, divorce, so many personal things. However, I do feel as if the hardest thing that I've had to overcome is depression. Because depression, um, it doesn't heal like a bone, which mends, and then, you know, you, you, yeah, it, it yeah, it that doesn't heal like that where it mends and that's the end of that. It can recur and come back again. So you constantly have to find ways to um, to encourage your heart and encourage yourself and your soul and just stay, uh, stay encouraged and be happy and take what God gave you, whatever it is, and just make the best out of it because, um, you know, you've got a life to live and, and maybe not even focus on yourself as much. You know, focus on yourself is good, but maybe focus on other people around you. That will help you with depression. It will, I promise. Um, what would winning mean to me? Uh, I could probably put my kids through college. Let them go to whatever college they want to go through. Let me put it that way. Because everyone knows college is just so expensive now. So that's what it would mean to me. And then, of course, uh, after that, I would try to probably improve my house. I, I do need a new kitchen, as you probably can see, <laughs> or will see. Um, maybe something like that. And... Um, you know, if I, if I really get to the point, I, of course, I would help, you know, friends and family and strangers. But I think I help strangers every day. You know, I can't always do it financially, but I try to be kind and thoughtful and um, try to help whoever uh, comes in my path. So I think all of that, um, it would be, it would work out. It would work out. I think, I think I try to help whoever comes in my path. So, um how would it change my life? It would change the life of others too, because I mean, you can only do so much with, with so little, I mean. And how would I use a cash prize? Yeah, that, that's how I would use it. These are the greens. Get them nice and focused for you. These are the greens. They're stuffed in peppers, but you can serve them in a family serving dish and just let everybody share and enjoy. That's fine. See, they're cut up nice and small and they're inside of each of the little peppers. They're like holding each serving or you can let, you know, the kids have them. They're fun. They're good. Next to that, we have our delicious shrimp cornbread fritters with chicken. This is chicken cutlet. And above that is the, um, the fish, which is the, the sway. Um, the sway, we, we did the same way we did the shrimp and the batter, the same batter. It's the cornbread batter. It's really good. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for sharing my recipe. Can't wait to give you another one. Love you. Bye. Evangelist Priscilla Meeks starts now. Evangelist Priscilla Meeks.